I will thank Kaushik first for giving me this opportunity to speak here. Kaushik gave me, in fact, a very difficult mandate. Kaushik has given me a very difficult mandate. What he has told me is, you need to address my members and tell them how to cope with the changes in the PMP career. Okay. I happen to prepare. Anyway, I'll have a tab on my time. Now it's 4.15. You can let me know when I should get out. Okay. Maybe 4.45 or 5. Yeah? 5. Okay. I happen to prepare certain presentations like Banking 2020 some three years back and also Gartner's presentation I was involved. I sit in many boards. See, I do one thing useful in life, that's what my wife says, is to read books and go for examinations. Otherwise, I don't know anything. Even the car my wife drives. Okay, I sit, I sit in the back and read the book. I am not ashamed of it. That's my passion and I follow that. Okay, so Banking 2020 as well Security Profession 2020, these are all I was part of such research. And even skilling 2020, I was part of that research. But what will happen to PMP 2020 was a tough question. Fortunately, I happened to follow on two research papers published by Axelos. I will present those papers to you and I will share those white papers with the institute members, which they can look at, I mean, you for your reference. First, I will share those papers verbatim to you and also give my opinions to you how the PMP profession is evolving. You can interrupt me anytime. You can ask me any questions. Okay. This is my a brief bio. Okay. I happened to pass CISA somewhere in 2004 and thereafter those years we need to maintain CPE. We didn't have a facility of webinar and all that. Okay, so you need to attend 40 years of 40 hours of training. So thereafter, in order to satisfy CPE, I went ahead and appear, I mean, appeared for a lot of examinations. Ultimately, it has grown so much. Now I'm giving insecurity to any manager whom I'm reporting to. Okay, but one thing, as Mr. Biswajit said, I'm very clear about my life's constitution. I will die a cyber security professional, that is for sure. I will not know even to drive car, I don't care. I'm only going to do this. Right. Okay, this is my agenda. Okay. Axelos has given a research paper on two professions. See, according to me, ITSM profession and PMP profession have a lot of symbiotic relationship. So, I will present both the papers, how Axelos went ahead and did a research across the globe. They called upon a lot of leading project managers and ITSM managers and asked them, what is going to happen to the profession? Give me your frank opinion. And they distilled their opinion and here, that's what I am presenting. So the copyright belongs to them. Of course, this white, white paper is public. And Kaushik asked me to give some takeaways. So there are three takeaways from my side. With this, I'm moving forward. Okay, now first is, my focus is on Axelos research on future project management profession. The future project manager says, in simple terms, that henceforth, every project will be based upon a strategic business objective. You cannot just have a normal objective. To survive in this competitive world, you will have a strategic project and you should be part of it. You will no longer have output mentality. You will have outcome. What does it mean? I remember I don't much come into PMI website because though I acquired my PMI certification, thanks to my project manager, somewhere in yesterday years, 2004, I helped him. So he took mercy on me and gave me hours. Otherwise, I never handle any project. So sometimes I stray into PMI website and I saw CPO, 
and the concept called chief project officer who is supposed to sit in the board and who is supposed to endorse to the board that the project is meeting the outcomes. So that, is, that has come in somewhere in 2011. But now it has come out very publicly that you need to be outcome oriented and not output oriented. Hence, what all the competencies is required? Business analysis, change management, organization diplomacy, influencing relationship management. These are all the competencies required of a project manager. Now, when I say change management, remember, I will define it very bluntly for you. Change management, when it is process oriented, comes in ITIL intermediate curriculum. When it is organizational oriented, it comes in ITIL expert examinations. Organizational change management is people management. Normal change management is process management. And now, as a project manager, you are supposed to handle both. Now, let me share with you certain experiences of the project manager whom I am seeing for the last 15 years in government sector and in MNC. They are good in any one of them. Either they are great in people management and forget entirely the processes or vice versa. That they need to look into. I think this is clear for you, this color. I made it different color. I'm not great in preparing presentation. This is what the words which is coined out from so many people across the world spoke. Strategic vision is primary. Projects or investment that a business makes to achieve its strategy. So you are not delivering to a project, you are delivering to an investment. I cannot substantiate more than in my real life when we are suffering project after project and we are getting beaten up by the senior management, by the client senior management. Okay, so this one stand we should take. Now, 90% of the project managers, they agree that a stronger strategic vision that aligns with the goals of the business is required. Also, I want to add to you one thing. I have watched what all words are used, what all phrases are required. So accordingly, I have given you a last slide, which skills you need to acquire. Okay, there is a logical mapping. So I'm not pulling out something from the hat and saying that, but this is the reason. 90% agree that new technology will generate risk that will need to be managed. 75% agree that increased regulation and compliance will generate more projects. Now, according to me, of these three, the last one is a great good news for me because it keeps me in profession. As a security officer, as a compliance professional, it keeps me in profession. And GDPR is coming next May 2018, okay? In local, GST is coming. So, all these regulations are helpful for professionals like us. As a PMP, you need to be aware of all the regulations. I found some of the project managers saying it belongs to risk officers or a compliance officers. That is not acceptable, right? Now, let me go to the second heading, project managers as agents of change. I want to share with you this word democratization I am coming across in many areas. First, I came across in technology. Means, now technology is available to everybody. So, we call it democratization. Previously, we had servers in data center, right? Now, everybody is having a server in hand which can also speak, right? Your telephone is a server. It is also having the utility to speak. Now, democratization project management is the good news for the profession. It's a great news for PMI is that everybody wants to become project manager. But of course, practicing project manager will be a different breed altogether and they will handle more and more changes and they are interested with more responsibility. In fact, now, as you, as you will see in the subsequent slides, change management and project management is becoming synonymous. PMs are change agents and need to be able to influence others to effect change. Sorry, there are two, it's a repetition. They need to challenge and it is this wider skills that differentiates them as professionals. It will no longer be project management. It will be all about fast paced change management. So what it works on you, you need to be very thorough in change management principles, not only in process based, 
also in practice based and also in ITL regulations. Remember, in India, Reserve Bank recognizes ITL regulations. And ITL regulations are accepted by the authority, all the monetary authorities of the world. So, I will request you to pay attention there. So, 90% of project managers believe ongoing training will be vital to keeping up with the pace of change. But I am asking, how many of them are going to have time to even take a book and study? Or how many of the organizations send for training? I don't know the answer. I am coming from a government. I worked in stockholding corporation for almost 20 years. And our management had a view that every three months, person should go for training. And just count how many trainings I would have attended. I sat in IIM. All the AIMs I sat as a resident candidate. I went abroad. Thereafter, I joined MNC. No training at all. You have to read yourself. Or whenever there is a ransomware attack, you have to listen to a webinar. Okay. So, I am only worried about the quality of the people who would have joined in MNC. Luckily, when I joined MNC, I'm already crossed 45, and I have enough to back up, and I have a habit to go for my own seminars, have my own training every quarter. But in MNC organization, they don't care. So, now ongoing training is vital. They are all accepting. Now, this is a message for you. 72% see project management becoming a respected career choice. I fully accept this because project management has become a proper curriculum in most of the postgraduate degrees and undergrad undergraduate degrees even in India. 76% 76 76 believe project management will become a basic business skill. And 72% believe project will become more professional. Now, project managers as people managers. Here there is a contradiction. Everybody agree that automation is going to take, take over. So, will there be widespread unemployment? Of course, no. Project managers will have more responsibility for emotional skills. As machines takes over, you as a human being have to become more human. You have to become more emotional. You should have more emotional skills than any time ever. This is a revelation. And so you should be great in communication. You should be great in diplomacy and relationship building. Actually, this was, I mean, I should thank Kaushik for the last 20 days. I was reading various papers and this was a revelation for me. Everybody is saying, because automation takes over, we will become more human. Automated processes will make things easier and leave PMs free to make a difference from a human perspective. Diplomacy is a key skill for PMs. Okay, project managers see automation as a, sorry. I think I'm going back. It is not about tools, methodologies, or frameworks anymore. It is about business change, and how will you do it at a human level? There needs to be more focus on the softer skills and how to develop these. Mind you, so many papers are speaking on this. Nobody is speaking, saying that you should read PIMBOK well. That is taken for granted to get the certification. But now, the priority is moving towards this side. Fifty-nine percent of project managers believe automation will take over routine tasks, and fifty-seven percent believe artificial intelligence and machine learning will have a profound impact on project management. Now, artificial intelligence and machine learning, you may have to spend time and find out what it is. In fact, I thought I should speak on a small primer on it, but for lack of time, I didn't get it. So I'll just give you one simple definition of artificial intelligence. What do you mean by artificial intelligence? See, in order to computer, to run a program, what you should do? You should write an algorithm, right? You should write an algorithm to a computer and give to it and say, please sort out the numbers in ascending order or descending order. And it follows your algorithm religiously, correct? But here the problem is simple. But when you come across a huge problem where you cannot write algorithm, you leave the computer to ascertain the algorithm for itself and then execute it. That is artificial intelligence. Clear? Now, project management in practice. 
I see that project management professionals, I've been observing them, they give a lot of weightage to practice and they have carry a lot of arrogance and pride. Say, look, I have a lot of experience and I fully go with them. So what the PMs across the world is saying is, look, your book is very nice. There is a lot of theories there, but we need practice. So there is emphasis on training materials which will have practical inputs. And they are also giving importance that like conferences where we can meet people and share knowledge. Project management is seen as a good way to gain practical experience across all functions of the business, building detailed organization awareness and offering a route to senior management. Many a PMPs have accepted to become a CEO of the organization, being a project manager is a route or is the way to go. That's a very nice sign for the profession. And also, it's, it's, it also it says the amount of responsibility and the challenges you'll be facing. It would be good to see training content with more practical elements and trends that link the industry. This is what they're asking. At conferences, we share our own practical case study experiences and the uptake is huge, but you don't see it from the project management training providers. This is their complaint. Now, Agile. Anyway, we follow Agile all over. I mean, where we are supposed to follow waterfall also, we follow Agile and we mess up. And we get the good methodology which is found in 1970, a bad name. But now, Agile methodology is about to stay. It, there is a huge increase in adoption of Agile methodologies. Organizations are taking an increasingly Agile approach. So, there will be very fast-paced, flexible and business-oriented Importance of real-time information. This I'm seeing priority everywhere. They are saying calendar reporting we don't want. We want real-time reporting. That's what the CEOs ask for. And continual improvement, AJL is allowing. Just a second. The pace of change in business today means you have to adapt and to be more strategic. The world does not stand still when the PEDs are signed off. PMs need to keep reacting. AJL will become more relevant because we need to be more responsive and the way the annualized business plan is disappearing to re rapidly changing external environment. The quest for perfect results will change to the quest for faster and more flexible results. There is no time anymore, 80% is good enough. This reminds me of the research, this, this coincides with a technological moment. Can you just tell me which technological innovation this, uh, this uh, resembles? You know, let's take a sip of water. Pardon? Okay. But much bigger, much bigger. We will. Pardon, I'm unwilled here. Okay. All of you are near, but the answer is big data. In big data, the explosion of data is so huge, you might have heard the word SQL, right? It works on RDBMS framework. The result should be Knife sharp accurate, that's what SQL's job is. Or it gives a no, it gives an error at line three, right, or four. But now we are going for no SQL. No SQL gives 80% correct results, but very fast. So that reflects in project management methodology also. So this cannot be false, for this is coincided and validated by the technological advancement also. When we moved to Agile, we renamed all our PMs and called them transition managers as it better describes what they do. So now all of our project managers are transition managers. In product development, the faster you can give the client something tangible to assess, the better. There is a demand for a much faster feedback loop. But this contradicts with my compliance because in compliance we say you develop a product properly with all the security features. But project management says, give it as soon as possible. Wonderful, our profession flourishes. So 89% of project managers agree on the need for more creativity and flexibility in project management. 84% agree that Agile will grow in importance. So Agile is, yet to, is there to stay. Now learning styles. What type of learning styles they want? Now they no longer wanted a big fat book called Pimbook. It is so tough to study, it is so boring to study, right? During my time, I remember I somewhat managed to complete the book, 
but otherwise it is not easy point to read even isaka manuals are better but now they want gamified and interactive solutions to read and both the institutes that is both pmi and axilos is working on it okay so i completed what the future pmp as per the institute i have just offered all the white papers entire points i offered now let me move on to itsm professional what does it service management profession holds for and how it is going to impact pmp okay these are the itsm professional all of you may be aware that it service management does aligns it services to business needs achieves organizational goals have a service oriented approach all these we know now first and foremost service organization technology will be embedded in everything so nobody needs to be taught how to use it now hence for that is a future do you not do you need the word it if everything is it so when you go for a solutioning what type of attitude you should have see it summarizes there is a subject called enterprise it governance which is the toughest in isaka certification the entire certification material this small quote gives you in a what do you call in a capsule what the entire curriculum of cgit says we need to ask bigger questions of our clients our biggest automotive client asked to set up 1000 servers we said no you need to tell us how to get more cars of the production line that's what ultimately what this brief is really about so not the focus on technology but the focus on what type of outcome we should we should be giving so 81% of itsm professional see other departments moving to a service based approach 77% believe it times it teams will be organized around service or application and 77% believe non technical business units will get more involved in service governance service strategy and service design so all this reflects on pmp career also so as a pmp you will also be involved in this because there cannot be any project in this world which is purely non it at least henceforth and now and henceforth and why when it is involved ideal practices are very much there and what happens to itl profession will affect pmp profession also as a itl person you will be a strategic collaborator means you will not have separate agreement or a separate sla for network applications infrastructure but you will have a comprehensive sla across a business region or a business unit or a function so 92% of itsm professional agree that they will need a much stronger strategic vision aligned to the wider business so please note the word strategy is appearing everywhere 76% see a growing need for coordination of services provided by vendors i have seen across mnc clients that my service my clients that various banks i have seen all of them want a single vendor all of them want to deal with one single point of contact they do doesn't want multiple vendors artificial intelligence i just spoke about artificial intelligence and once again it has arrived artificial intelligence and automation will free itsm professionals to focus more on strategic goals critical thinking and strategic anal skills will be the requirement so in future maybe pmp curriculum will include de bonos edward de bonos book also for thinking six hats or thinking creative thinking or what do you call the i forgot various names which edward, i mean i used to read lot of edward de bono books so maybe those type of skills will be in demand and that will be the requirement our ai product is walking off the shelf it tracks business changes in real time ai is going to take away some of the mundane work which frees people from some of the routines which in turn they need other skill sets to stand out and make a difference ai in real time means that supplier cost can be tracked in the morning you could be buying from supplier a then in the afternoon switch seamlessly supplier b calendar based reporting is redundant humans will stay a role in problem solving as ai can't make creative human leaps of faith by itself this is a good news that artificial intelligence can never substitute human beings howsoever they are because for we have lot of critical analysis and thinking which will be there so some jobs can get closed but other jobs will be there machines can't innovate innovate past big data people who can do that will always have a job see systems can give analytics and give some various output 
So interpretation depends upon you. ITM, ITSM personnel need to become brokers and facilitators, devising the best solution for the business need, rather than delivering a technical answer on a platform. So, what they say. 91% of ITSM brokers believe there will be more creativity and flexibility in ITSM. Watch the word. Creativity, flexibility, strategy. 89% think automation will take over the repetitive task of ITSM. And 77% believe artificial intelligence and machine learning will have a profound impact on ITSM workforce. Now, here comes my favorite subject, risk management. Now, across the world, ITSM professionals agree that cybersecurity will be the keyword. Now, henceforth, without cybersecurity and risk management, things cannot be done at all. So, Data drives innovation, but processes have to be in place to keep the data safe from malignant forces. ITSM professionals to guide business in implementing risk management techniques. This is my favorite slide. Information security management will be an essential skill for ITSM professional in the future. So if you see, one funny thing is also you are able to observe. All professions are converging. Whether you are an information security professional, or you are a project manager, or you are an ITSM guy, all are converging. Slowly, best practices will be the keyword. So I often tell my infra guys, look, you may have worked, I mean, 24 into 7 you sit in office, but you moment you ignore best practices, whatever you have done, client is not going to give merit, or you are not going to give any pardon if there is a regulatory problem. 91% of ITOs and professionals agree that cyber attacks, security breaches, and hacking will continue to increase and present a bigger threat. 90% agree that new technology will generate new risk that will need to be managed carefully. So IT risk management is a subject which nobody can ignore. That will be the future curriculum. 90% agree that increased regulation and compliance will generate a greater demand on the need for IT governance. I just spoke about enterprise IT governance. So that is another emerging subject which you should be master of. IT governance, a PMP cannot ignore. Finally, ITSM people or service management guys are, accept, are expected to be business leaders of tomorrow. So they need to embrace all these soft skills which you already see. So and I, as ITSM becomes more embedded in the business, the traditional technical IT role no longer exists. Because AI and automation is going to take over, more and more managerial skills are expected. But what we see in real life is, we often see every tech perspective, even from a PMP or from ITSM. They, should expect, they are expected to behave like a manager. Okay. Now I have gone to self-check one. Now these questions I'm, I have posed for you, showed the slides, which I have taken from white papers of the Axilos Research Institute. Now this slide is my own. These are the questions which I, I, I want to ask you all, which I normally ask, or normally come across in my 15 years of interaction with project managers, that they don't seem to know the answer. Do you have sufficient knowledge of the business in which you're running IT projects. Okay? Pathetically, many times, the answer is not so great. Will you be able to converse with the senior executive for an hour about the business without using the word project, time, scope, or any related jargon? See, don't get me wrong, these are my own questions which I carry every day. Wherever project management is coming, I have put risk, compliance, security officer, okay? So I've just changed my dialogues to myself into project to suit you. What are the top three pain points of the senior management to whose business you are servicing? I have the answer. For my client whom I am servicing, I know what are the top three pain points. I need not know at all, but I know. As a security officer of the bank for to whom I am a client CISO, I know very well what they will be discussing inside the board. While my peers are very busy looking at anti-malware algorithm and recent hacks, and they are showing their arms up, look, I have done a CEH. 
CEH I have done in 19, some 1950 or 40, over. Now still I can't raise my arms and say I'm doing CEH, right? I have to grow. How are you aware of the CEO strategy and at least his top three targets for this year? How many of your project objectives are directly supporting the senior management strategy and direction? Now I'll translate this question to suit me. How many of my security objectives are directly supporting the senior management strategy and direction? I have the answer. So these slides are yours. You can look for yourself. Are you aware of the regulatory bodies and the regulations to the business to which you are servicing? Blissfully, no. At least my project manager doesn't know. For sure. Are all these are practiced in your project? Never. Or it is a response of the client or worse, it is not even in my scope. Let me underline this. I have, suppose you are my CEO, I am coming and telling you, respected sir, I have delivered my project, but now police is waiting outside for you. Yeah? You will be going to jail now for next 15 years. Sorry, that, regu that amount, that preventive measure is not even my scope. Yeah? Or so sorry, sir. You know I have done an amazing job, but your server is under malware attack. Why? Because hardening that server is not under your scope, you know? It's like the doctor telling you, I have completed the heart surgery for you, but you are died, right? So which in the case, did a conversation happen with a client? When faced with a question of cost to the project or risk to the organization, which side you will take? Or you will say, leave it to the responsibility of the chief risk officer. Often, it's the responsibility of the CRO. Yeah? So these are all the questions, if you follow diligently, for sure, you will be in the management eyes. Management will be, whether your own organization is respecting you or not, you will be a darling for the client-side management. I should, I am declaring here publicly that I am a darling for the bank management for whom I am servicing. Yeah? So these questions, will, if you answer it diligently, it will take you to that step. Thanks. Now we'll go to career path. Biswajit sir nicely showed one photograph about the boss. The boss said 1958 I did this, 1940 I did this, right? Mm -hmm. I'll quickly say something. I happened to sit in, uh, many interviews I used to sit in the panel. So in 2008, I was in an interview panel. Uh, our company, mm -hmm. the parent company is uh, IDBI. So, Chief General Manager of IDBA will be the chairman of the panel. So I was sitting as a representative from Stockholding Corporation and the incumbent to be taken as a IT officer. So I'm in a senior position for a project. So all of them liked that guy. Ultimately my turn came and I asked him certain questions. Okay. He said, I'm a great programmer. Wow. Amazing. So when did you took some training on programming? No, I don't go for training in programming, you know. I went for training last time. I went somewhere some 10 years back. When did you refer any book on project management? I'm sorry, on training in software. I finished my engineering in 95. Afterwards, I don't remember seeing any textbook on programming. Okay. So I was fuming with anger. I kept quiet. Then the interview finished, the person left. Then chairman liked me always because I, the person will get angry very fast. So he will always look amusing for him. So he looked at smiling and said, Ravi, what is your hope, uh, take on this candidate? Of course, this candidate is disqualified. Immediately the HR guy start, started asking, hey, come on, man, come on, don't be so bookish, okay? I know you are a bookish guy. He, he is an expert, okay? Okay, will you eat food which is prepared? Some 24 hours back? No, no. No, 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 Ravi, don't compare food and this. This is different, you know, this is intuitive knowledge, you know. I see. Intuitive knowledge. Do you know IT, how it evolves? And I was remembering, while I was thinking about this to present you, I was remembering the captain who had a victory four days back because he got defeated with Pakistan. There are many Indians who are ready to shoot him die. I mean, he will be shot, he will be shot dead, right? He after all win just four days back. So, 
I feel, I see many characters inside MNC or anywhere keep on saying, 15 years back I did this, 20 years back I did this. The one thing I will share with you is, please don't have that constant reading and continuous learning. I, because of time, uh, what you call shortage, I didn't present many things. There are World Economic Forum papers have come. You can go through it. What are the slides I and mean, what are the skills required for 2020? Everywhere, one thing is common, is continuous learning. See, make no mistake, going for examination is different, continuous learning is different. You may opt to go for examination or no, that is up to you. But a stranger will recruit you only on the basis of your certifications and qualification. A known person may look at you. And second point, Reserve Bank nowadays, for every designations in the bank, I have given proper designation, designatory requirement. Now, as a servicing officer, if I go and stand before him and say, sir, I don't have any qualification, you have to get qualified because you work under RBI, how will he respect me? Yeah? So now, coming to the main theme here, I will say, as a project manager, you need to have very strong knowledge on ITL. If you already have, it's great. But I will strongly recommend that you need to have ITL intermediate or ITL expert. That is no excuse at all if you are very serious about your profession. One. Second, IT governance. I don't even know, many project managers don't even know the spelling of it. Okay. They do something, they shout at something, they don't care what does their outcomes, where it relates to management, they don't care. I know it's very easy to get lost out in routines, but any good book on IT governance and to go to a higher level, if you're taking a proper certification of IT governance, that is a must. Then COVID-5 or PGMP or PF, PFMP, all are same. Now the choice is yours. From technical side, cloud is here, there to stay. Now, you need to know either cloud security view, either CCSK or CCSP, or cloud plus from technical side. Big data and analytics is for sure it is there. So you need to appreciate it thoroughly. And machine learning and artificial intelligence, I have spoken. There are extremely good books available. There are free courses available in Google. It's all up to you. Any questions more you can give? There can be, I could have listed more, but these are the fundamentals. And any good course in strategic management will, will have a great value add. Okay, this one book, I have five more minutes just. I happened to stumble on an extremely good book, Habits of Great Performance in Peak Performance Time by Simon Hatley. Simon Hatley works with all the sports people, especially in England, and he was responsible for many a, what do you call, gold medal. Okay, so many a gold medalist he has worked upon. And I happened to pick up this. One thing I, uh, one striking point, which I, the, having read the book, which I found is, he was working with a swimmer. His, his, both of them, the trainer as well as the swimmer, had an intention to become a gold medalist. So they were confusing with too many things. Oh, I'll get a, what you call a sponsorship. I'll be the best person. And there are too many phraseologies they wasted and they worked for three years. Ultimately, he started asking a fundamental question. What do you want to achieve? Okay, I have 100 meters to swim. There are 250 meters. So I need to swim 250 meters pool as fast as possible. So this is your objective. Then why we are unnecessarily speaking so many things? Forget gold medal. You'll be the, you work to become the fastest swimmer for the two pools. So immediately he, got, get, he started getting right answers. He, start, he pulled over a lot of technicians, and dietitians and all. He worked very, I mean, very hard for four years and by the end of the fourth or fifth year, in that Olympics he'll get the gold medal. So the one point which I picked up from that book is razor sharp focus. Whatever you need to do, you make it a small routine and you only focus on that routine and keep doing it continuously and which will reach you to the final objective. So this one, you can see, always highly focused, takes on tough targets, hunger and dedication, no excuses, always wants to improve, okay? Always high quality training, never satisfied. These slides for your reference, you can look for yourself. Okay, so finally, this is my last slide. 
There's an excellent good book, Good to Great, by Jim Collins. I don't know how many of you would have read it, because it is a little bit scholarly. So you might have, if you're not finding time to read, at least one important essence from that book, I would like to read out for you, which I always, this, this is a poster which I have in my home. No matter how dramatic the end results, the good to great transformation never happened in one full swoop. There was no single defining action, no grand program, no killer renovation, no solitary lucky break, no miracle moment at all. Rather, the process resembled relentlessly pushing a giant heavy flywheel in one direction, turn upon turn, until a point of breakthrough and beyond. So, in simple layman terms, and I explain this. Sachin Tendulkar was always a Sachin Tendulkar. He was born a Sachin Tendulkar. He lived a Sachin Tendulkar. He came to cricket as a Sachin Tendulkar. Okay, and one of the training in ISO 27,000 lead auditor in Bombay, his close friend was happened to be part of the training, and he was really privileged to listen to all his routines, what he was doing. He said, in Australian winter, even if it is so grueling, he will get up at three o'clock in the morning and go for practice all alone. He will never miss a practice session, whatever it is. He was so cruel on himself. So, what I was about to say is, so Sachin was always a Sachin Nilgar, but. There was a point of breakthrough and beyond. Later on, all of us came to know him. And he's a celebrity. And it appears like a magic as if he's doing. But of course, there is no magic at all. There is a lot of hard work at the back. That's it. Thank you so much. Thanks for the time. If you have any questions, you can ask me.